So the Bose QCs or Bose's mid-tier ANC headphones and as their name suggests, they're very comfortable to wear and they have slightly improved active noise cancellation from their predecessors. But today we're going to compare the Bose QCs to both the AirPod Max and the Beat Studio Pros. Two headphones that I do feel are overhyped, but they're still very popular. Regarding pricing, the AirPod Max are the most expensive headphones here retailing for $550, and these are just a status symbol for people that just don't know better. Whereas both the Beat Studio Pro and Bose QC headphones have a retail price of $350. Now personally, I would wait for both of these headphones to go on sale, but with the Beat Studio Pro, I wouldn't pay more than $200 for these headphones. Nonetheless, if you want to pick either of these two headphones up, there'll be a link down below, or you can always try the YouTube shopping button. And if you want to further support the channel, pick up a big head approved hat. Link down below. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. By buying a hat, you help the unbiased and unsponsored videos coming and it also helps us cover more products and produce more versus videos. Thank you to everyone who's already bought a hat and look out for more designs coming soon. And also, please remember to hit that like button and let's get subscribed. Now first, let's talk about the included carrying cases because this is very important if you plan on traveling with your headphones. Now, the Bose QCs come included with a decently small hard shell case that's going to keep your headphones protected even if you cram them into a cramped backpack. And this is what we expect to see to come included with our premium ANC headphones. Whereas the Beat Studio Pro, these come included with a soft shell case, so you run the risk of crushing these headphones. And then there are the AirPod Max, whose case doesn't fully protect the headphones. So personally, I feel that the cases that come included with Apple's headphones are just unacceptable, whereas Bose just managed to get this very simple thing right. But with the cases out of the way, let's talk about the headphones themselves. Regarding fit, the Bose QCs are hands down a lot more comfortable than both of Apple's headphones for multiple reasons. Now, first off, both the AirPod Max and Beat Studio Pros have a tighter fit to them. The Beat Studio Pros are tighter than the AirPod Max, so personally, I feel that the Beats aren't big head approved. Whereas the Bose QCs, these have a loose fit, so these are definitely big head approved. And even if you have a big head and you like to wear hats, these will have you covered. But also, there are the headbands on these headphones. Now, the headbands on both the AirPod Max and QCs are well padded, and they don't cause any hotspots. And honestly, this net on the AirPod Max is one of the coolest things ever. But the headband on the Beat Studio Pro has very little padding on it, so it does cause a hotspot on the top of your head after like 30 or 40 minutes. But then there are also the ear cups on these headphones. Now, the ear cups on both the AirPod Max and Bose QCs have a lot of range of motion to them, which is great. Whereas the ear cups on the Beat Studio Pro, not so much. So what happens with the Beat Studio Pro is that your ear cups will apply a little more pressure on the anterior portion of your ears, making them feel a little unnatural. But then there are the ear pads on these headphones. The ear pads on the Beat Studio Pro are very shallow, so they will press down on your ear cartilage, which does get uncomfortable after like 40 minutes as well. Now the ear pads on the AirPod Max are more spacious, but their fabric ear pads can get a little itchy at times. But finally, there are the Bose QCs whose ear pads are a lot more spacious than these other two ear pads, and their leatherette doesn't get itchy like the fabric ear pads on the AirPod Max. And finally, there's the weight of these headphones. The Bose QCs are the lightest headphones here weighing in at 235 grams, whereas the Beat Studio Pros weigh in at 260 grams, but then there are the AirPod Max which weigh in at a hefty 384 grams. So these headphones are very noticeable when they're on your head. Now, the reason why the AirPod Max weighs so much is because they're using much more premium materials. But these premium materials shouldn't be to the detriment of comfort. Whereas with the Bose QCs, they are a lot easier to forget that you're wearing when you're sitting still and you notice them shifting around a lot less when you're walking around with them on. So overall, the Bose QCs are a lot more comfortable than both of Apple's headphones for multiple reasons. They have less clamping force and they have a loose fit. Their headband doesn't create a hot spot on the top of your head. They sit more naturally on your head because their ear cups have good range of motion. Their ear cups are a lot more spacious. Their ear cups don't get itchy and they're very lightweight. Plainly said, if your headphones don't fit well, you're not going to want to wear them.
But with fit out of the way, let's talk about tech specs. Regarding battery life, the Bose QCs have an advertised battery life of 24 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on, which is okay. But unfortunately, you cannot use these headphones with their active noise cancellation completely turned off, so you can't extend their battery life that way. Whereas with the AirPod Max, these have an advertised battery life of 20 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on, which is below average. Whereas with the B Studio Pros have an advertised battery life of 24 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on. But with both of these headphones, you can use them with their active noise cancellation turned off. And the B Studio Pros are good for up to 40 hours. Now, when it comes to charging these headphones, both the Bose and Beats charge via a USB-C port as they should. Whereas the AirPod Max charge via a lightning port, which is useful if you have an iPhone 14 or older. And when it comes to fast charging, with the AirPod Max, if you were to charge them up for five minutes from a dead battery, they're going to get you one and a half hours of playback time. With a 10 minute charge, the Beat Studio Pros are going to get you four hours of playback time. And with a 15 minute charge, the Bows are going to get you three hours of playback time. But overall, I do feel that the battery life on the AirPod Max does need a lot of improvement. Now, when it comes to connectivity, the AirPod Max are a great option for an Apple Power user because you can easily hot swap between any of your Apple devices associated to your iCloud account thanks to their built-in H1 chip. Whereas the Beat Studio Pros, these don't have the H1 chip, so hot swapping between devices isn't as seamless. But then there are the Bose, which can be connected to any two Bluetooth devices at the same time, which is good if you're a power user with devices from different ecosystems because you can easily hot swap between any two devices regardless of ecosystem. So for example, you can hot swap from your iPhone to your PC with your Bose headphones. And when it comes to overall connectivity, all of these headphones have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. And when it comes to audio codecs, all of these headphones have support for SBC and AAC, which is perfectly fine. But if you want to, you can always just use a wired connection with any of these headphones, but the wired connections on these headphones are very different. Now with the Beats, you can use their USB-C port as a wired connection, whereas you can't use the USB-C port found on the Bose as a wired connection. But the Beats also has your more standard 3.5mm audio jack, whereas the Bose are using a 2.5mm audio jack. But personally, I'm just glad that both the Beats and the Bose come included with an audio cable, so you can use them with a wired connection right out of the box. Whereas with the AirPod Max, these don't come included with an audio cable in the box, and they don't have an audio jack. But you can always still use them with a wired connection if you get Apple's Lightning to audio jack cable, which is sold separately and personally I don't think that this is okay because if you want to use your headphones with a wired connection either you want to monitor your audio or you just want to simply connect these headphones onto an airplane's entertainment system then you are going to have to pay extra to do so. But most importantly, the Bose QCs are the only headphones here that you can use completely passively. As in, if you want to use these headphones with a wired connection, they don't have to be powered on. Whereas with these other two headphones, they do have to be powered on even if you want to use them with a wired connection. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about sound. Now first, the Bose QCs are a pair of neutral sounding headphones. As in, they're going to be better suited for someone that likes a more neutral or vocals focused EQ. Now these headphones have bass but the bass is mostly on the audible side, as in you can hear their bass, but you can't feel their bass. Now you can always go in and adjust the EQ on these headphones to your liking, but even if you were to crank the bass all the way up on these headphones, they aren't going to physically rattle your head. So for that reason, some people will say that these headphones sound flat, but they don't sound flat, they're just different. But then there are the Beats Studio Pro and AirPod Max. Now, even though I do criticize these headphones a lot, I will admit that they sound very good. Now, first off, you can't directly adjust the EQ to your liking with these headphones like how you can with Bose. But with the Beats, if you use them with a wired connection through their USB-C port, you can choose from a few different pre-made EQs. It's strange. But with the Beats, these have a bass-heavy sound signature, and the bass on these headphones resonates a good amount, and there's a good amount of kick to it. But the vocals and instrumentals on these 
these headphones also have a good amount of detail to them. But then there are the AirPod Max, and I can't help but feel that these sound noticeably better than the Beats. For starters, the AirPod Max just sound more open than the Beats, and they have better instrument separation. And this is with both of these headphones having their spatial audio turned on and set to fixed. But also, the bass on the AirPod Max just resonates a little more than the bass on the Beats. And also, there's a little more of an emphasis on the highs on the AirPod Max than on the Beats. So overall, yes, I would say that the AirPod Max sound noticeably better than the Beats Studio Pro, but I feel that most people will be happy with the Beats Studio Pro. And overall, I do feel that both of Apple's headphones are going to be able to please more people than Bose's headphones. Because with both of Apple's headphones, you can physically feel your bass, whereas the bass on the Bose QCs is mostly on the audible side. And when it comes to the muted controls on these headphones, the Beats are using physical buttons, but I hate the placement and layout of these buttons. But they get the job done. Whereas with the AirPod Max, they have their crown, which is a lot sleeker than the button on the Beats. But then there are the Bose QCs which have your more traditional button layout which are much more naturally placed. Overall, all of these immediate control buttons get the job done and they're super easy to use because they aren't touchpads, but I do prefer Bose's layout here. However, something that the AirPod Max has over these other two headphones is that they have built-in wear sensors. So they'll automatically pause your music when you take them off and then they'll start playing your music again when you put them back on. Now, personally, I don't really care for wear sensors on my headphones, so I usually just turn them off, but they're there if you want them. But now, let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones. Now, plainly said, the active noise cancellation on the Beats Studio Pro is not impressive whatsoever for a pair of premium ANC headphones. The ANC on the Beats Studio Pro performs more like a pair of mid-tier or entry-level ANC headphones. But then, there's the ANC on both the Bose QCs and AirPod Max, and both of these block out a lot of noise, but so that you can see for yourself, we're gonna jump into an ANC test. So like you may have just seen, both the Bose QCs and AirPod Max block out significantly more noise than the Beat Studio Pro. But when it comes to comparing the Bose QCs and the AirPod Max, the AirPod Max do a better job of blocking out constant lower frequency sounds like road noise, whereas the Bose QCs do a better job of blocking out higher frequency sounds like chatter. But overall, I do feel that the Bose QCs has the better active noise cancellation here because they have less carbon pressure than the AirPod Max, thus making the Bose QCs more comfortable to wear than the AirPod Max. But personally, I feel that if you're sensitive to cabin pressure, but you still want to block out a lot of noise, then you might want to go with the Sony 1000 XM5s, even though I do have my critiques about them as well. But also, all these headphones have an ambient mode, and the ambient mode on all of these headphones is decent. However, the ambient mode on the AirPod Max is the most realistic sounding ambient mode here. It sounds like you're not even wearing headphones. But with the Bose QCs, thanks to a recent update, you can somewhat adjust how much noise these headphones let in, whereas with these other two headphones, you can't. But overall, I do feel that the AirPod Max have the best ambient mode here, because the microphone array on both the B Studio Pro and Bose QCs are very fast to pick up wind noise when walking outdoors. The Bose QCs more so than the Beat Studio Pros, which can get very annoying if you're walking around outdoors with these headphones with their ambient mode turned on. But finally, here's the microphone test, and I feel that all of these headphones have a decent sounding microphone on them to take phone calls with while in a quiet room.
However, I do feel that both of Apple's headphones have better sounding and better performing microphones on them. Both of Apple's headphones do a better job of picking up your voice while in a quiet room. But I also feel that they do a better job of dealing with noise pollution because right now the AirPod Max are doing a really good job of reducing all of this road noise. Because for comparison's sake, if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear all of this road noise. But if you were to switch back over to the AirPod Max, it is severely reduced. And the B Studio Pros are also doing a really good job of reducing all of this road noise. Whereas the Bose QCs are letting in more road noise than both of Apple's headphones. Now when it comes to blocking out chatter, the Bose QCs are trying to block out some of this chatter. But I feel Apple's headphones do a better job of reducing all of this chatter. But again, for comparison's sake, if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear all of this chatter. But if we were to switch back over to the AirPod Max, it is severely reduced. So overall, all these headphones have decent sounding microphones on them because of phone calls with. But I do feel that Apple's headphones do a better job of dealing with noise pollution. But with all that being said, personally, I prefer how both the B Studio Pro and AirPod Max sound over the Bose QCs because of their more dynamic sound signatures and physicality in their bass. And both of Apple's headphones have a better performing microphone on them to take phone calls with. But I do feel that it's hard to justify getting either the AirPod Max or B Studio Pro over the Bose QCs because they are both very uncomfortable to wear for different reasons. They also don't come included with a proper case for traveling, the battery life on the AirPod Max is very low, and the ANC on the Beats Studio Pro is not in line with what you'd expect on a pair of premium ANC headphones. Even though I do have my critiques about the Bose QCs, personally I do prefer them over both of Apple's headphones because they give you a better overall experience, they're a lot more comfortable, and they have less compromises. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.